thanks for watching the tutorial. I'm just going to be going over to how to create these three barrels in Maya really quickly using GameTextures.com materials. And I think it should be pretty fun. It's a really basic tutorial. It should take me like 15 minutes or so, and then we'll have some pretty awesome looking barrels. Alright, let's get started. Alright, so uh, you can see that I just... I made a couple different variations of the barrel for this, for the little demonstration, just so you can see how quickly you can make our barrels contain whatever you want them to contain, but um, barrels have lid that pops off, they have an inside of them, just some warp wood. They're pretty simple. So yeah, let's just get started. I'm just going to uh, hide all of these things. In case you're interested, I'm using Maya 2013. and. I, my sign is a cancer. Alright, so, obviously I just, I just hit everything so I can work with my same uh, lighting setup that I had before, and I switched it back to default quality rendering so I could uh, get my texture update. Sometimes mine's a little buggy, and it doesn't update everything like it should. So obviously the first thing we're going to do is create a, uh, if I can click on it, a new cylinder here, and scale it up. Scale it up to a good resolution, I mean, or a good, uh, good size for our scene. I'm gonna hide the grid. Actually, I'm just gonna hide this and bring the grid back. So in Maya, you can change the pivot point really quickly by holding down the D key. So I'm gonna hold the D key down and hold the V key down and snap it to this point using the middle mouse button. And then I'm gonna snap it quickly to the center of our scene, just for the sake of uh, making sure everything's easy to work with here. I'm going to start out by finding about the right height of the, the barrel that I'm going to be making. That's pretty cool. That's close. So I've already downloaded all the materials, obviously, and set them up, but I'm just going to go over that again real quick. So to make them look pretty cool in Maya, you're just going to use a regular font. Yep, that's what it'll look like when you apply it. I'm going to apply a new file texture and then... I have all of these uh, textures uh, unzipped into the same file on my Windows hard drive so that, you know, for ease of work. So I'm going to navigate to the barrel old texture and click the underscore D texture. That's our diffuse material. You can see that when I apply it, it looks pretty wonky, which isn't really, really what, we're, what we want. So I'm going to create some quick UVs for us so we can see what we're working with. So I just created, went to create UVs and clicked cylindrical mapping. And I'm going to grab this little red slider and slide it all the way over to the right. And this will give us a nice and square UV layout for our UVs here, which is exactly what we want. So in the UV editor, real quick, I'm just going to click the shell. I'm holding down control and right click and go into shell. That'll click. select this entire UV island is what it's called, Rochelle, and scale it this in the U direction really quickly until until it's about the right uh, the wood pieces are about the correct width that I'm looking for. I thought that was pretty good. I'm gonna exit that. I'm gonna be back in here pretty soon, but we're gonna exit that for now. And I use a lot of hotkeys here. I'll, I'll try to go over them all. I mean, I'm a big fan of using the my uh, contextual hotkeys. So I'm going to go to, I'm going to hold control while selecting one of these edges and go to, go down to edging utilities and click two edging and split. That's going to give us a nice edge loop right here, exactly in the middle of this edging. Let's scale it out a little bit. Give us a little bit more of a barrel shape, like that. Yeah, not bad. And I'm going to press the G key to redo the last filter that we used, or the last uh, tool, which is going to be the split in the center. So that's going to give us these two edges. I'm going to scale them up and give us a little bit more of a barrel shape again. I can select the entire edge loop by double clicking it. So there we go. That already looks awesome. Not too bad. Alright. 
I'm going to come in here now and add in some new some edge loops to define the geometry that we're going to extrude for these little metal straps. So to do that, I'm just going to go to Edit Mesh, Insert Edge Loop Tool. It's going to give us this little clicker here. And line it up exactly right there. Another one right here. Another one right here. I keep doing that for all of the uh, metal straps. And now that I did those, I don't really need this geometry anymore, so I'm going to double click this edge loop, hold down shift, right click, and go to delete edge. And I'm going to press G to do it on this one as well. So there we go, we have a pretty, we have our shape already. I'm going to extrude these next to give us a little bit more of a silhouette here. So shift, right click, extrude face. That'll give us our little gizmo here, which will give us the local transform extrude option. Just pull it out a little bit so it affects the silhouette. It's nice. And I'm going to click this little power icon, I guess is what it is, right here in the right hand corner. And scale this down. Get a little bit more shape right there. I'm going to do the same right here. Like this, scale it down, and one more time here. Click this, a little power button to switch it into world transform mode, and pull it up slightly so that it's not bending down. I didn't like how it was bending down before, so I'm just going to pull it up very slightly so that it's flat. So I'm sorry, so that the bottom edge right here is flat with the rest of the barrel. And one last time right here. Extrude face. Nice. Pull it down again. So, next thing I'm going to do, I don't really like how these are perfectly 90 degrees here. Looks a little mechanical and nasty, so... I double click that edge, this edge loop right here. Actually, let me, let me make these a little bit bigger for you so you can see. Uh, where is it? Display polygon, custom polygon settings. And I'm just going to increase the edge width of. Oh, you know what? Maybe they don't have that anymore. Anyway, I'm gonna pull this back up. I have the preserve UVs mode turned on, which is an extremely useful thing. We're going to use it in a sec, but for now it's not important. So I'm just going to pull this up here so that we can get a little bit more of a, a lip on this geometry. Not too bad. So our barrel's already looking awesome. I told you it's going to be a simple, simple little tutorial. Next thing I'm going to do is get some UVs on this top, this top section. And actually, what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna I grab both the the top and the bottom faces of the barrel here. I'm gonna extrude them really quickly inward to give us uh, some polygons to work with. So I just I'm just scaling it down like that. I'm gonna press the G key to extrude again and pull it in. So now we have. A little lip there, which is perfect. I'm gonna throw some UVs on this really quickly. Make sure it's projecting on the Y axis. Click project. You can see that it's it's showing our entire uh, texture here, which isn't what we need. So I'm gonna go into the UV texture editor real quickly and hold Control, right click to UV, and then Control right click to shell to make sure that I have the entire UV island selected. I'm gonna pull these over here and scale them down slightly so that they don't have any of the metal on them. So you can see how I'm just kind of placing the UVs over the areas of the texture that I want to see in the final product. 
is a pretty useful workflow. It's, it's, it's kind of how we do all of our materials with this, this kind of workflow in mind, so that you can just quickly grab a chunk of geometry, UV it, and then throw it over the part of the texture that you want it to have displayed. It's, it's pretty useful. It's, it's, it's a good way of working. It's kind of a texture. It's called a texture atlas. I mean, having a single texture by itself isn't a texture atlas, but we'll get into that in the later tutorials. So I just grabbed this edge here and I'm deleting it. It's not really necessary. What I want to do here is uh, I want to grab all of these faces so I can UV them and give them this nice metal texture that we're working with. I don't want those ones. I'm just going to grow the selection and press shift and then the close caret button or the period key. I'm growing it to that so that I'm selecting everything that I want and then I'm going to deselect the ones that I the faces that I don't want there. Cool, those are the faces, and I'm going to create a cylindrical map on those ones. Those faces. Perfect. So in my, uh, I have, in my UV editor, I have some settings, some pretty basic settings here turned on. I have, under image, I have dim image and shade UVs checked. Shade UVs gives us this blue and red UVs, which will tell us if our our normals are, I mean, I'm sorry, our UVs and our normals are right side up or upside down. So if you click it, you'll get the red UVs, which means they're upside down. So what I'm going to do is flip them on the U direction here, just by clicking this little button. Perfect. Now they're blue. I'm going to shrink them down to size, because I'm trying to get our rust texture onto our mesh here. So you can see that it's working right here, but it's we're still getting some stretching right here, which is not what we're looking for. So that's because I haven't unfolded these UVs yet. So I'm going to pull this down to right here so that the edge, the lower edge is at the bottom of this rust texture. Oops. I don't have this selected. Okay. I'm sorry about that. unfold this. So by, by using the unfold option, it kind of it used an algorithm to procedurally unfold these UVs from the bottom UVs. Because they used a cylindrical projection, they weren't, they were right on top of each other. I'm going to pull it up like this. So I'm getting this nice highlight right here on the edge of our material. Or of our crate. Nice, that looks cool. Quick bevel. Not bad. So I'm going to apply, I, I want to apply the same, the same exact UVs that I did up top on the bottom just to save us some time. So what I'm going to do is duplicate the barrel, pull this up. I'm going to grab these faces again, and I'm going to grow them the same way as I did before, just select the entire metal rim. I'm going to hold shift to invert my selection and select everything, so that inverted my selection. Delete it, go modify, center pivot, modify freeze transformations to zero everything out over here in our transforms and f flip it on the y-axis to negative one. I'm going to come down here now and grab all of these faces and delete them. I'm just going to attach the top of the barrel to the bottom of it so that they're identical. You shouldn't really notice anything, any differences here, but it'll just save us a little bit of time. So those line up exactly. I'm going to go mesh combine. Select vertexes, select all the vertices right here on the welded area. Go to merge vertices and merge vertices. 
There. Now our entire mesh is selected, I think. Yep. Everything is everything's merged properly and we have our mostly finished barrel. Which is pretty quick going. So the next step is to create a removable lid for this thing. So what I'm going to do is select these faces again. These top faces. Go to mesh extract to separate them from the main body of the barrel. Modify center pivot to bring our pivot back to the center and pull it up a little bit. I'm, I'm going to duplicate this real quickly. So shift D, pull it down, and I'm going to flip it just like this. Oh, actually, that didn't work. I'm just going to scale negative one on the Y axis. Oops. Negative one. So that'll flip it so that our right, the right sides of the texture are pointing the right way in our normal space. Select them both, mesh, combine. And then I'm just going to double click this border edge right here. Extrude down and holding the V key. I'm going to middle click one of the vertices and that'll snap it down. Snap that new those new faces down to the, the bottom of the lid. Select all the, mer the vertices again and click merge vertices. There's some hard smoothing right here as you can see, which is less than ideal on our face. So I'm going to select the, this edge, go to edge ring, to edge ring, and then soften. You can you can do the soften up here as well. So normals, soften edge. All right, so we have a pretty quick lid. I'm gonna give it a quick bevel right here, just because it looks nice. Pull it back down, and there we go. There's our our finished lid. I'm gonna pull this out of the way real quick though, because we're gonna work on the inside of the barrel now. Inside's gonna be really quickly. So I grabbed this border edge right here where it was connected to the lid, and I'm going to extrude edge. Press W again to get it get our manipulator into world space, and pull it down. I don't want it to go all the way to the bottom. I don't think it really matters. So I'm going to pull it down almost to the bottom. One more time I'm going to go to extrude and then I'm going with that move, extrude with those extruded edges selected I'm going to go to uh, I'm sorry. I'm going to shift right click go to merge collapse edges and click merge edges to center. Nope. That didn't work. I have to extrude again. So extrude edges and then merge edges to center. And that'll close off our our inside of our barrel. Select next step is to select all of those faces because they don't have the proper UVs on them, right? They're shading. They have a weird, goofy texture on them, which we don't want. So I'm going to select all of those faces again. Deselect all of the bottom ones. We don't want them in there. Go to create UVs. Planar mapping. Planar map. I'm going to edit that really quickly again in our UV editor. There we go. And I'm going to shrink that down. The hockeys in the UV editor are all the same as the regular Maya hockeys. And before, when I. Oh, we'll get to it in a sec. So you can see we have some weird UV or some weird texturing happening right here in the center, which we'll fix now by selecting all of those UVs or all of these faces, going to create UVs and assigning a cylindrical projection. I'm going to grab the red thing again, the little red manipulator bar right here, and pull it all the way across. So you can see that that applied our texture properly without stretching. Go back into the UV editor, go control click, control right click to UV, control right click to shell. I'm gonna pull these out a little bit. So they roughly match the scale of that 
the texture on the outside. And then I'm going to shrink them down because I don't think I want these bars on the inside. Oh, our texture is flipped as well. I'm going to flip that backward. So I think, I think what I'm going to do is scale it up so we can get the bars on the top and the bottom of this. You can see how these are being affected right here. So the bars are going to be on the top and the bottom. Right click, select UVs, grab this line, or this edge loop, and pull it all the way down. Awesome. Now our barrel's looking pretty good. We go back into edge mode, select one of the inside edges, shift, right click, oh, sorry, control, right click, two edge ring utilities, two edge ring and split. And I'm going to expand that a little bit to give us some of that barrel contour back. All right, we'll zero this out, put our lid back on. We have a, we have a watertight barrel with a lid. <laughs> All right, next step is uh, we're gonna show you how to add the gold texture. This is, this is optional, I'm just showing you how anyway because I told you I would. So let's pull this lid away. Bah! What I'm going to do is double click this edge to grab the edge loop, shift right click, extrude, and then pull it all the, like this, shift right click, merge collapse edges, merge edges to center. So now we have, we have some geometry to apply our gold texture to, which is all we really need. Oops. Unselect all of those ones edges, mesh, extract, modify, center, pivot again, and we're going to shrink it, shrink our little mesh, grab this edge, this border edge again, extrude edge, and expand it all the way back out to so that it's clipping into our barrel here. giving us a little bit of geometry to assign our gold shader to. Just like that. Let's soften it real quick. Shift right click. Soften harden edge. Soften edge. And then I'm going to assign another planar map to it. This one's going to be a bit different because I'm going to assign a new, a new material to this, which will be our gold. So right click. Assign favorite material. Fong. I'm going to delete our history real quick because it's getting out of control. In our attribute editor, you want to select your font now. Click the little checker box, click File. And, you know, just we might just do the Apple one. Oh, right, let's do the gold. Gold's awesome. Select our diffuse gold map. Beautiful. this little button to bring us back to our top node of our material. Go over to our bump map node, assign a file to it, use as tangent space normals, click the little arrow, and assign our normal map to it. And one last thing, we're going to assign our specular map to our bumps, or to our gold. Not the specular, it's not going to look like gold because it controls our shininess and the color of our uh, reflections. There. Alright. Let's we'll switch it back into viewport 2.0 so we can get a glimpse of all of our little materials working together. Oh, looks like I forgot to finish setting up our barrel material. So I'm going to assign our normal map again, tangent space normals. Assign. The underscore n is our normal map. Cool. And our specular map. Let's turn off our edges. I think our gold is 
a little small, so I'm going to go into the UVs for our little gold geometry and shrink it, shrink it down. have a barrel of gold. With a lid. Zero that back out and apply our, put our lid back down. Oh, our gold's poking through a little bit. Pull it down. Now if you take the lid off, lo and behold, a barrel that is stuffed to the brim with Aztec gold. Alright, so that's pretty much the end of our tutorial. Uh, there's a couple more coming that are going to cover importing all of these into UDK, setting up our materials, and giving them physics and such. But that was a pretty basic workflow for how to use our textures and apply them to your props and your scenes. Uh, thanks for listening.